Hello everyone, my name is George and welcome back to a JavaScript tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to save a shopping cart in the browser's local storage. We are going to write functions to save, update, delete and get the total price amount from the shopping cart. So without wasting any time, let's begin. In front of me I have a JSON file named products.json and as you guessed in this file we have our products. Every product is an object and objects have properties. Every product has an ID, which is unique, an image, a name, a price, and a quantity property. Let's quick see the other two files. I have an index.html file. The only use of this file is to link my JavaScript file so I can run my code in the browser. Now, if you follow along, load the index file in the browser and open the developer tools. Choose Applications from the top menu, and then select Local Storage from the left sidebar. Now we have a visual of the browser's local storage, which is going to be useful in today's video. Now, the last file is the JavaScript file. Here we are going to write our code. So, let's start. The first thing that we do is to fetch the data from the JSON file. I'm going to use the fetch method and I will insert the JSON's file path as an argument. This is a simple GET request. The only thing that we need here is the target's file path. Now, the fetch method is returning a promise. And we have to use the then method, which resolves that promise to a response. We are going to catch the response object with our response variable, which we have as an argument. The response object has a method called JSON. We use that method to parse the response's body to a JavaScript object. In our case here, the JSON method will give us an array holding our products. But the JSON method returns also a promise. So we have to use another then method to catch our array of products with a variable data that we have here as an argument. Now we can put our data in the local storage. We are going to use the local storage object and we are going to call the setItem method. The setItem method takes two arguments. The first argument is the name of the entry and the second argument are the data. Notice that we have to convert the data to a JSON string with a stringify method. That is because we can store only string data types in the local storage. Next, I will also store in the local storage an empty cart array. This will be our shopping cart. But first, I will make sure that the cart array doesn't exist in the local storage. I don't want to overwrite any existing data every time the script runs. Now we are done with the fetch method. Let's run the script and check out the local storage. I will bring the developer tools in the screen so we can check it out. We see that the products from the JSON file are now stored in the browser's local storage. And we see that we have created also the empty cart array. Okay, now let's hide the developer tools and let's write our first function. But before that, I have to set some global variables that I'm going to need more than once, so I won't repeat myself. The first thing I need is a variable that will hold all the products from the local storage. Next, I will do the same thing with my shopping cart. Now the products variable is holding all the products, and the cart variable is holding all the products stored in the shopping cart, but for now it's an empty array. Now we can write our first function. I named the function add item to cart, and as the name implies, we are going to use that function to add products to the cart. The function takes as an argument the ID of the product that we want to send in the cart. Now, the first thing that I have to do inside the function is to go through all the products and search for the product ID that matches our argument. I will use the find method on the products array. And if a product ID from the local storage matches our argument, then the find method will return that product and it will be stored in the product variable. Next, we are going to add the product to the cart. I'm going to use an if statement because I want to check first if there are any other products stored in the cart. I'm going to check the cart's array length, and if it's equal to zero, the cart is empty, and this will be our first entry. If the cart is empty, I'm going to use the push method on the cart array to add the product. Next, inside the else statement, which means we have products stored in the cart, I'm going to use again the find method, but this time I'm going to search for our product in the cart array. If the product exists, the find method will return that product and store it in the res variable. But if the product doesn't exist in the cart, the find method will return the value undefined. 
With that in mind, we can do a check on the res variable and if the value is undefined, then we are adding the product to the cart. I write the code this way because I don't want the same product more than once added in the cart. Next, I will put the cart back to the local storage. This will override the old values with the new ones. Now, let's run the function. Let's reload the page and check out the local storage in the developer tools to see if the, one, if the function worked. Ok, nice, the function is working and the product with id1 is added to the cart array. Let's add two more products. I'm going to add the product with id2 and the product with id3. Let's run the script again and we see those two products are added in the cart array and the local storage. Ok, the first step is finished. We are able to add products in the shopping cart. Let's see now how we can remove a product. Let's comment out those three lines and let's write a function that will remove a product from the cart. I named the function remove item from cart and again as an argument I have the ID of the product that we want to remove. The logic here is that I'm going to create a new array which will hold all products from the cart except the product we want to remove and then I will put the new array in the local storage overriding the shopping cart. To achieve this, I'm going to use the filter method on the cart array. The filter method filters an array based on a condition and creates a new array. In our case here, we are going to create a new array called temp. Every product that has a different ID from the argument will be stored in the temp array. Now we can save the temp array to our shopping cart. Let's run the function and let's remove the product with ID 3. Now let's open the developer tools and check the result and we see that the product with ID 3 is no longer in the cart array. Nice. Now let's hide again the developer tools and let's write a function to update the quantity of our product. I created a function update quantity. Now this function will take two arguments. The first argument is again the ID of the product we want to update and the second argument is the new quantity value. The logic here is simple. We are going to loop through the cart array we are going to find the product that matches the product argument and then we are going to target the product's quantity and we will set the new value. Let's do this. I'm going to use a for off loop to go through the cart array. Inside the loop I'm going to have an if statement and I will search for the product ID that matches the product ID argument. And if the condition evaluates to true I will update the quantity. And last I will put the cart back to the local storage with the updated quantity. Let's run the function and let's say we want to update the product with id2 and set the quantity to 8. Let's open again the developer tools and we see that the product with id2 has now a quantity value of 8. Nice. Now let's write our last function which will calculate the total price amount of our shopping cart. Our function is called getTotal. There is a two step logic here. First I will create an array which will hold every product's price value and then I will take the array and summarize its values so I get the total price amount. Let's do this. I will use the map method on the cart array. The map method will run a function on every product in the cart array and I will create a new array from the return to values. In our case here I want to create an array called temp which will hold every product's price value. Notice that I have to parse as an integer the price value, otherwise I will not be able to summarize them. Next, to get the sum of the temp array, I will use the reduce method. The reduce method will add the previous value with the next, and the result of that calculation is stored in the preceding variable, so it can be added in the next one again. That goes as long as there are values in the array. At the end, we left only with a single value, which is the array's sum. Let's log in the console the sum variable and run the function. But before I run the function I spotted a mistake I made. In line 61 I should say parse float not parse int because we are dealing with decimal numbers. Now let's run the function and open the console. And we see the total price amount of the products that we have in the cart array. Nice, everything is working fine and that's it for today. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next video.